Speaking of good production, though, the man in that video yes. was John Hightower. <laughs> and no, he didn't disappear, although sometimes it might feel like it because he is so fast. But earlier this week, we were wondering, who is the most explosive player on this Boise State offense? We found out the answer. Bronco Roundup's Power Stats, brought to you by Idaho Power. You have the power to save. From the moment he touched the ball last week against Portland State, Boise State junior John Hightower reminded everyone what makes him so darn special. Very explosive, very dynamic. He has legit real speed, and that's what makes him different than most in college football today. Whether it be in the return game or on offense, good things usually happen when Hightower touches the ball. After averaging a team best 16.3 yards per catch in 2018, he's leading the Broncos in that category once again in 2019 and continuously proving he's a matchup nightmare. Touchdown! He's a deep play threat and he can go get the ball and, and uh, they want to one-on-one -on -one him and we've got, we've got advantages. When it comes to putting points on the board, Hightower has proven he's the most efficient option the Broncos have at wide receiver. He's an extremely intelligent football player, one of the best I've been around, and very explosive, very dynamic. 20.5% of his career receptions have ended with him standing in the end zone. How does that compare to some of the other elite? Austin Pettis, who holds the school record for career touchdown grabs, scored on 17% of his career catches. Matt Miller is the program record holder with 244 career catches, but only 11.9% of them went for six. Finally, few of any players were as explosive as Cedric Wilson. Despite averaging 19 yards per catch as a Bronco, he crossed the goal line on just 12.9% of his career receptions. All of those numbers are impressive, but none hold up against Hightower. It's those comparisons that lead me to my next question. Is he one of your most, if not your most explosive offensive guys? I would say he's the most uh, explosive guy we have, no, no doubt. Uh, there's not a lot of guys uh, Honest, quite honestly, in college football to have that kind of speed. Hightower truly possesses the ability to score from anywhere on the field. In his career, he has found the end zone from almost every level of the field, including twice from 60 yards out and three times from 40 yards out. In addition, no other offensive player on the active roster has scored from 55 plus. Hightower has done it five times, twice on the ground, twice through the air, and once on kick return. It's all that success that almost makes you forget Hightower has been in the program for a little over a year now. I feel a lot more comfortable, mainly because I know the plays. Last year I was studying them, now I know them. My vision is more broad when I come on the field other than just thinking about what, I, what route I got to run. His adjustment from junior college to FBS football wasn't completely smooth as an academic issue threatened to slow him down last year. And isn't that the story of a lot of people that are extremely talented, but there's a lot more to it than just being talented? Those that surround Hightower on a daily basis believe he's better for it. And now that he's caught up to the demands of being a student athlete, he's become a better teammate, he's become a better leader. You can bet he will be even more difficult for defenders to keep up with this fall. To me, like you wake up in the morning morning, you know you're doing things right, you know you're taking care of business, then you can go out there and you can perform at whatever it is you want to do. And it happens to be football for him, and he's really good at it. <laughs> no kidding, Coach Arson. You know, Hightower's breakout game last year was probably UConn, but the game that I'll remember really yeah. was this one right here at Air Force. Big time game last season in Colorado Springs. Eight catches, 182 yards, and three touchdown catches from Brett Rippin. Two of the three touchdown catches were for over 40 yards. The Boise State Alumni of the Week, brought to you by the Boise State Alumni Association, where anyone can be a Bronco for life. The Boise State Alumni. Welcome back live to the Bronco Roundup Game Day Show. And uh, yeah, we left you with that image right there. John Hightower, you know what? I, I really do think he's gonna be a huge chess piece in this game. He's gonna get a chance to get one-on-one -on -one coverage as we come out live to the blue. and. Um, that's something that, I mean, is going to be significant against this Air Force team, I think. Shane, I say Air Force, what first comes to mind? Discipline. <laughs> it goes to the defense. You got to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. and obviously, on defense, if you're not disciplined and the guy who's supposed to have the pitch man doesn't have pitch man, we'll see what we've seen many times when playing Air Force. Okay, hold on, though. Didn't you play offense for Boise State? <laughs> I and did. And you're still concerned about the triple option. At the end of the day, you play 
one or maybe two triple option teams a year. <laughs> yeah. So for defense, it can be very Man, getting in everybody's rough. head, I guess. I don't know about that. It can be that. very rough. How, how about on your side of the ball, though, when you face that Air Force defense? Because they're a team that has been very stout against your guys' ground game in recent years. Yeah, and it goes back to discipline. Those guys on defense are really disciplined. They yeah. do their jobs. You don't really have those guys who, oh, I want to be a superstar. I'm going to do my job and someone else's job. So you got to be very disciplined. Shane, you go back to last week's performance in the win over Portland State. You had CT with two touchdown grabs. Hightower had one right here in the corner of the end zone. He had the kickoff return. What stood out to you about the wide receivers' performance last week? I think the big plays. They were actually able to turn the explosive plays into scoring plays yeah. rather than getting them down inside the 10 and we had those running backs running around. I mean, we'll just broke it down for you. It was like there was a full spread. Oh, and yeah. All the wide receivers were eating last week. Everybody got <laughs> just a little bit. Khalil Shakir, he had four catches for 61 yards. Everybody contributed in that win. We just heard about John Hightower, though. And he's kind of, he's a kid that showed up last year. He's, he's only been here for a little over a year, really. Struggled with something last year. He's well beyond that now, and he's really contributing. How much does his speed make him a factor for this Boise State football team? He is just different than anybody else, it seems, at that position on the roster right now. What a lot of people don't understand is when you have speed, that's one thing. When you have speed and you can run routes. Yeah, there it is. You get in and out of breaks. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to compare him to a Stephon Diggs. Okay. Huh? In the okay. NFL. He can run routes. He, he has speed, so he can beat you deep. Mm -hmm. But you have to respect him because he can run routes. Yeah. Shane, you have to run a 40 versus John Hightower. Who's winning? <laughs> you know, uh... I'm carrying a wagon right now, so. <laughs> I was going to say, we'll, we'll, go back, we'll go back to the heyday, man, okay? Like, well, let's go back maybe like 04. We don't even do the 05, uh, the, or excuse me, 14. God, 04, oh, yeah. 2014, you know, before maybe the bum wheel as a senior. You know, I think if we had to race, it would come down to that last seven, eight yards. I, I know I would get out. I'm fine on right? the first yep. 30. Yep. Yep, but that's when, like I said, that Dude, wagon, those, those I got it now. <laughs> I really have it now. But, yeah, when I get to about 30, 40, it's coming back. Hey, what do you think about the, the new black uniforms? And you were actually here when they initially had brought, brought black uniforms to Boise State. They went dormant for a couple of years as they updated their style. Now they are back. How much did you guys like wearing them then? And no offense, but how much cooler are these? <laughs> I mean, I think that might have been my second home game, UNLV yeah. 2012. We got black uniforms. We thought it was the best thing ever. <laughs> now, these guys are coming out. They look like Power Rangers. <laughs> Try to see how I can get one of those jerseys. No kidding. <laughs> Shane, you look at tonight's matchup. Air Force has got Boise State a couple of times over the last decade. It's a mountain division game, short week, triple option. How important is tonight's game? Tonight's game is huge. Whoever really? wins yeah. this game controls. Our, our division yeah. and as you see throughout every week the mountain west is it's on the up so we, we have to pull this one out i know it's going to come down to being disciplined like i said on defense our defense has played tremendous the last three games two games and it comes down to tonight it comes down to them being disciplined and be able to defend the triple option i mean it's it's a it's a big difference than what they've seen. It's, yeah. it's different than Florida State. Yep. You know those guys are athletes, but this is a triple option. Yep. Yeah, I would hate to play defense. I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> I would too. Shane, we appreciate it. Earlier on the show, we were joined by Brandon Thompson. Just now, Shane Williams Rhodes, two of the best to ever put on yep. the blue and orange. Shane, we appreciate it. Go enjoy the game, buddy. Thanks, Shaner. Right. Good seeing you guys. Wagon, baby. Well. <laughs>